Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to create this simple phone ringing animation that could be used as an icon or small web animation. But I will split this tutorial into two parts. Today we're gonna model the phone and set up a lighting and in the next part we're going to animate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it will really help my channel to grow. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Let's jump right into empty Blender file and I will just select everything, press X and delete. And now I'll start with the plane, so let's press Shift A and add a plane. And now let's tab into the edit mode and we'll press E to extrude the shape like this. And now E again. And now press S, then X to scale it on X axis like this. And press G, then X and move it back. So this will be our simple phone shape. And now press S and Y to scale it on Y axis as well. And of course, we can tweak this a little bit. And now with this basic shape done, we can tab out, go into the modifiers panel and add bevel modifier. And let's add one more segment here that will serve as our supporting loops. And now we can press Ctrl 2 or simply add modifier and add subdivision surface like this and add one more level. So now we can right click and shade this smooth. And this will be our simple phone shape. And you can tweak the shape by adjusting the bevel amount right here. Okay, this looks fine, so now we can tab in, and with the top face still selected, I will hold Shift S and Snap Cursor to select it. Now tab out and I'll press Shift A and add another plane here. Tab in and press S to scale it down like that, and then S and Y, scale it on Y axis and move it aside. So press G, then Y and move it here. And now we can go here and add mirror modifier and switch to Y axis and switch off the X axis. And now we can just press E and extrude this up. Now let's press Ctrl R to create a loop here and increase with the mouse wheel so we have two cuts there and right click to release. Now we can press 3 for face select, select these two faces by holding shift and press E to extrude. And now let's press Ctrl R and add one more supporting loop down here. Tab out and press Ctrl 2, they'll add the subdivision modifier again and right click and shade smooth and we can press G then Z and move it down just like that. And I will create the phone handle. So let's press Shift A and this time I'll create the circle here. And let's reduce the number of vertices to 12. Tab in, press S and scale it down to something like this. And now I'll press 7 on the numpad to look from the top view. And press G then Y and move it aside like this. And we can tweak the size here a little bit. And now press F to fill and E to extrude a little bit just like that and now extrude once again and we can scale this down with S and press G then Y and move it aside. And now we have this end gone right here so let's fix that and we could use grid fill for that but sometimes it gives um, unexpected results and right now I have pretty good idea how to divide this so let's press 1 for vertex select and now we'll join these vertices here so by holding shift Let's select these and press J to join. Be careful not to create these edges with F. They would not cut through that face. You need to use J to join. And now let's select these two. Press J to join. And now only two pairs left are these. And now we have nice quads here in place. So we can press Ctrl R, create a new loop cut right here. And let's go for a face select again. So press 3, select these two faces and press E then Y and extrude it like that, press X and delete faces. So this is the basic shape and we can tweak it a little bit more, but first I want to add a mirror modifier here and let's switch off X and enable Y. And of course we'll enable clipping. And now let's switch on the X-ray view. I will go for vertex select once again by pressing one, select these vertices, press G then Y and move them back. And now we can switch to the face select by pressing three. Um, we can turn off the X-ray view and select these faces right there and bring this up a tiny bit. Now let's enable that X-ray again. We can press 3 on an numpad for a side view 
Now press one for vertex select and we can tweak the shape here just by moving these vertices around, create a little bit more rounded shape here. Okay, something like that. Now tab out and we can press control two for subdivision surface. Let's disable the X-ray view, right click and shade smooth and we have a nice phone handle and we can finish by tabbing back in. Select this face right here and pressing I to inset and creating a new supporting loop with Ctrl R right there. And depending where you place your geometry, um, you can have a different look of this handle. Maybe it's a little bit more chubby or something. So now is the time to tweak it. Um, I'll press 3 on an ampad for a side view. And again, with the X-ray view, I will just tweak the placement of these faces and move the handle down. We can see we have origin point right there. So tab in, press A to select all and G then Z to move it down. I want to have that handle here um, approximately in the middle of that object for later animation. And now press G then Z and place it here just like that. Now I want to create the dial and I'll use non-destructive method for that. So I'll hold Shift S and switch cursor to world origin. And let's press Shift A and create a circle right there at the bottom. And I'll adjust the vertices back to 32. So it's a smooth circle. Press G then X and move it here. So we better see what we are doing. Tab in, make it smaller. And now I'll press F to fill and E to extrude. So this will be the base here. And now let's tab out and Shift S switch cursor to select it. So we have it here on the origin point and now we can press shift A and add empty here on plane axis. We'll use that for the array modifier and now let's press shift A and add mesh and cylinder. Um, we don't need 32 vertices so let's reduce to something like 16 and tab in make it smaller like this. And now we'll move it aside but be careful not to exit the edit mode. Um, you still need to be in the edit mode so the origin point stays here in the middle so I'll press 7 on an ampad right now press G then X and move it aside and you can see I'm moving the mesh and the origin point stays in the middle so when I tab out I can rotate this like that and now let's add array modifier here and let's disable relative offset and let's enable object offset here and I'll pick that empty object right here let's set count to 10 and now since we have 360 degrees and 10 dials, um, we need to divide that. So it'll be 36 degrees for a dial. So let's press R 36. And now we have a perfect circle of dials. And of course you can tweak this by rotation of that empty object. And this method is non-destructive because now I can just select the cylinder, tab in and change its size its placement on X axis, whatever I want. And additionally, we can tab out, shift click the dial object. And here, make sure you have the bull tool add-on enabled. So go into the preferences add-ons and enable bull tool. And now if you press control minus, you will subtract that whole object, including its modifiers um, from the dial. And this is still editable. This is still non-destructive. So you can always just go in and change these. Okay, now let's add some more detail. You can still edit the original object as well. So we can do inset, for example, and extrude, and that will still work. Now let's right click shade smooth, and let's go here to the object data properties, normals, and enable auto smooth. And of course, select the Boolean object and shade smooth as well. So the insides of the holes are smooth. And now we can just select everything here, shift click the dial, and press Ctrl P and parent to object. So now we can move this as one object and now we can just go to the snap options enable face snapping with individual elements and align rotation to target on now let's go for top view by pressing 7 on an ampad press g then x move it here and by holding control we can snap it on a surface there so let's rotate this and we can now scale it down a tiny bit and we have our dial here now with this dial selected let's hold shift select these other objects with the phone as last press ctrl p and parent to object so now we can manipulate the whole phone i will reset the cursor and now we are ready um, for some texturing and lighting so i'll press shift a and add a plane scale it up tab in select the far edge press e then z and extrude it up now select that edge once again press ctrl b and increase with the mouse wheel so we'll create the bevel like that so we have 
nice infinite background in place, maybe move it a little bit back, right click and shade smooth. And now for the camera, um, let's look from the front, press shift A and create camera. And now we can hold Ctrl, Alt and press 0 on the numpad to place the camera where our viewport is. Now let's go to the output settings and let's modify it to something like 1600 to 1200. And we can additionally press G and Z twice to move the camera in and out and G to pan it around. And now let's select the phone and rotate it a little bit, maybe to the other side like this. Now let's go to the render settings and in the EV settings let's enable ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. They will help us to see better previews, although I will use cycles. So let's switch to cycles now and enable GPU and denoising for viewport render and I will reduce the samples to something like 512 for preview purposes and in the performance tab I'll reduce the tile size as well. And that's for the render settings now press Ctrl B and limit the render for the camera viewport only. So now if you do the render preview, you will see only this section here and there are no lights in place. So let's fix that. First of all, I will enable scene lights and scene world in the material preview and now press shift A and add a light. I will choose area light here and just bring it up. So press G then Z and bring it up like this. Now in the light settings, I will increase the power to something like 250 and just rotate it here. Hold period on a keyboard and switch to 3D cursor. You can do it here as well. And now press R, X and 45 degrees minus. And we can always press R then X twice to rotate it even more. And then maybe press G then Z and bring it up. And now we can easily just rotate it around object until we have light setup that we like or reflections that we need. Just like that and we can also switch square shape to disk so we have more rounded reflections on that object okay so this is the base light i will use and now it's time to add some colors and materials so let's select the phone and we'll create the first material and i want to give this red color just like that with some really small roughness like 0.1 i want it to be glossy and now add the same material here and let's select this object right there and increase the metallic value. And I'll add the same one here. So there's not much here um, in terms of materials. We are adding just some basic principal material with some color. And now for the background, I want to go something like blue or violet. So this is the nice basic setup. And now we can add some more lights to create ambience, to create more reflections. So let's select this light right here, press Shift D and RZ and rotate it to the other side. You can see how we are adding reflections there and we can change the shape to rectangle and just modify the shape so it's tall and thin and we can create this kind of reflections here. That will really help to define the shape a little bit better, something like that. And now we can duplicate this light with shift D once again, RZ and move it back, make it really larger. And you can see this will create this nice rim light all around. So something like this and bring it up. But there might be an issue that this area light is shining too much on the background there. So there are multiple ways how to deal with that. You can either reposition the light or bring it more towards the back or when you're using cycles let's see the preview you can go to the object settings and in the visibility tab you can just disable diffuse ray visibility that will disable um, the light on the surface but it will still be visible on the reflections you would need to disable glossy if you don't need the reflections from the light so this might work too and now let's add one more light here so i will select this one here press shift d again right click to release and I'll press Alt G to reset its location and Alt R to reset its rotation. Press G then Z, move it up a tiny bit. Now let's look from the top, press G then X and move it back. And I'll switch back to the medium point, press R then Y and 45 degrees. So I want to shine this light on the background there. Maybe make it a little bit larger and quite stronger so let's try something like 1500 so we have a really strong backlight here 
and now we can tweak the color here and create some nice ambience we like and now add some ambience so let's go to the world settings and let's add some world light that has some color as well something like this and we can tweak the position of the backlight here and all the colors we have in the scene and now the last step i want to go to the render settings and in the color management we can increase the exposure and change the contrast preset to something like medium high contrast and that will give this a little bit more edge yeah that's for the phone model and next time we'll take this model and animate a little ringing animation loop so please stay tuned for that animation tutorial next week so that's it for today i really hope you enjoyed this one if you did please leave that like it will really help me and again if you're new to the channel and you want to see more please hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day